Well, uh, let's talk now to the government uh, to get their view on today's stories with the Health Secretary, Steve Barclay. Uh, good to have you here, Steve. Good Thanks morning. very much. I'm sure we're all wishing the lioness as well Absolutely. for later in the week. Um, can I talk to you first of all about, about the baby Stockholm? Um, in the headlines all of last week and, of course, over the weekend we heard about Legionella. Why, why didn't the Home Office wait for the Council's Legionella test results before you started letting people on board? Well, the Home Office did take precautionary measures as soon as we got the results. Uh, it's right that there was tests. Them? So ministers found out on Thursday night, is my understanding, so Home mm -hmm. Office ministers were aware on Thursday. They took action as a precautionary measure there. So it's perfectly normal that these tests are done. They were done uh, at the end of the month. Uh, once ministers were aware that there were some concerns, they took the cautionary measures uh, and the ship will then, the barge will then be made ready and people will come back in. in the but isn't, isn't a normal procedure if you are going to, you know, house people somewhere and you need to do tests, you wait for the results of the tests before you start putting the people in. And if the, if the results of the tests hadn't come back, why were people allowed to go in? Well, this is a, a standard thing the council had done as part... There's no reason to suggest there were concerns. As a precaution, the tests were done. As soon as ministers were notified on Thursday night that there were some concerns with that, they took instant action in terms the, of... The, the council says that. that they told their contractors on the Monday mm. and that the Home Office was informed on the Tuesday. Mm. And you're now saying it was Thursday. Who, there's a disparity there, isn't it? Are the council fibbing? Uh, well, uh, it may be the council notify the Home Office. That's a, an issue for, for those in the Home Office uh, to respond to. Obviously, this is a Home Office lead. My understanding from colleagues in the Home Office is it was notified to Home Office ministers on Thursday uh, and they then took very quick action uh, as a result. But you, but you can see that if, if the results came back on the Monday and you were still housing people Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, others would say that's not quick, quick reactions at all. You were still allowing people to go onto a boat when there was the potential for Legionella? Well, I think this was a precautionary decision. I think there was a, an isolated incident that uh, raised a concern. No one has been injured. Uh, I think health checks, have been, uh, health checks have been carried out with those that were on the barge. Uh, my understanding is the decision taken was a precautionary one. But in terms of what ministers were informed of, my understanding from Home Office colleagues, ministers were notified on Thursday uh, and took a decision as a precautionary measure as a result of that. So is the gap then between the Home Office and ministers, that sort of Tuesday, Thursday gap, should the Home Office of informed ministers faster, Well, my understanding is when the council was aware as opposed to when Home Office and Home Office ministers were aware, uh, and that's why I think uh, the council has been seeking to clarify who they did notify and when. But obviously this is something the Home Office leads on, uh, and I know I'm responding on. Uh, in terms of the, of the checks that have been done on these people, do you know whether any of them have shown traces of Legionella? Uh, and my understanding is no-one has, uh, so there's been no concerns in terms of anyone that's been on the barge, uh, and all of those people are being subject to, to health assessments. Do you think people should be put back, back on the Bibby Stockholm? Yes, I do, because uh, it's costing around £6 million a day in terms of the cost of hotels. It's important that we both maintain safety standards, but also uh, uh, reflect the, the, the pressure on the, the taxpayer position mm -hmm. in terms of that £6 million. So, only... so it is right that we are using the barges. There's a range of things that we're doing. We're bringing the numbers of crossings down. The number of crossings is lower this year than last year. The French authorities have stopped 40% more boats uh, than they did previously. Uh, our deal with Albania has led to a 90% fall in the number coming across from Albania. So progress is being down, numbers are down, but it's also right we take action in terms of that £6 million cost of hotel accommodation, mm. and that's what we're doing. But the Bibi Stockholm, if at full capacity, could only house 1%. Of, of that six million, so it's a, it's a tiny it's a tiny impact. The baby stock going isn't going to solve the problem. But it's one of a number of measures, mm. and that's the point. Yeah. And the number of crossings is down. The action we're taking with the French authorities is having an effect. We're also taking action upstream to try and prevent people in terms of the disruption with the criminal gangs taking action against the people smugglers upstream as well as what's going on in France. But the, the barges is one of a number of measures. It's also why we're taking our case to the Supreme Court in terms of Rwanda. We think that will also have a significant deterrent effect. So there's no simple one answer on this. There's a range of things that we're bringing forward, but overall the numbers are down. But if you say that, you know, the numbers are down, the baby stock I'm obviously meaning to act as a deterrent. We had wall-to-wall -wall coverage of, of, of it all of last week. And then on Thursday, 755 migrants came across the water, the highest number to cross in a single day this year. We had six people died on Saturday. 
it does seem clear that in the short term it's certainly not having any impact at all. Well, this is why we also think we need the policy in terms of Rwanda. Uh, we need to be able to process in a third country. We think that will have a significant deterrent effect. So there's no one simple answer on this. There's a range of things that we're doing. Uh, the numbers overall have come down. We are making progress with things like our deal with Albania, which has led to a 90% fall in the numbers coming across from Albania, having a returns policy in place. Rwanda is also a part of that. But we do need to get the cost of hotels down. That is far too high for the British taxpayer. It's costing £6 million a day, uh, and it's right we react on that. And this only affects 1%. Uh, you are the health secretary. <laughs> Let's talk about health issues. I know that you're uh, pushing a, a, new, a new thing of, of putting cards to try to discourage people from smoking in, in, in tobacco packs. But also it's been reported this weekend that, that you're planning to scrap or reorganise cancer targets this week. NHS England wants you to. Are, are you going to ditch these guidelines of this two-week referral from, from a GP? Well, let me tell you with the, 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 the inserts in cigarette uh, packages first. Um, what it's about is, is learning from best international practice. So this is something the, the Canadians have done for some time. The data suggests it's very effective. We know that smoking is the biggest cause of cancer. And we also know that many people who smoke do want to quit. So the question is, how do we better enable them to access the right services, to get the information they need? The evidence from Canada suggests this is one of the ways that is helpful. So we're having a consultation on that. It's all about how do we better empower the patient. So if a patient wants to give up smoking, we know that's the best thing they can do for their health, is to give up smoking. What can we signpost? How can we help them access the right services? And the lessons from Canada suggest this is a positive way forward. And and of course, you know, giving up smoking is something you can do to help prevent yourself uh, catching cancer. Um, so, so back to these guidelines. Are you ditching these guidelines of the two-week referral from, from a GP for, for those with suspected cancer? Well, what we will ensure is we won't do anything in terms of uh, cancer targets that isn't recommended by the cancer clinical experts. Uh, and anything that would be done would be done in consultation with but uh, the leading cancer charities. you'd have to sign it off, wouldn't you? Uh, charities. They, they... Yes. So, so the... In terms of the consultation, we've had a consultation in terms of looking at the cancer targets, because what really matters is survivability. What are the one-year and the five-year survival rates? Those are improving. There's a 9% increase in the one-year uh, all-cancer survival rate over the last 15 years. There's an improvement in the five-year survival rate. So uh, what, is, what is it that makes the most difference in terms of people's survival? Uh, what is it that the leading clinical figures uh, want us to do, uh, and then how are we consulting with the leading cancer charities about any changes? So, so that's the work we've been doing. We've had a consultation uh, on that, and we'll have something to say uh, in the coming days on it. But, but you, are you, you are going to sign off what they have asked for, which includes well, redu reducing this target? We, as I say, we'll have an announcement in the coming days. That's not something uh, being announced today. But we're in discussion. We've had a consultation, listening to what the leading clinicians say in the cancer field, because we're treating more people for cancer. There's a 20% 28% increase in the number of urgent GP referrals for cancer. We're diagnosing people earlier. We're treating more people, 20,000 more being treated for cancer this year than before the pandemic. And survival rates are improving. So we're making progress on cancer in terms of the number of people being checked. Three million checks this year, 636,000 more than before the pandemic. So we're checking more people, we're diagnosing earlier, we're treating more people, okay. and the survival rates are improving. But what we want to ensure that the targets we have are focused on outcomes rather than the process of whether someone's had a check.